Oh, hey guys. Anyway, I was just uh, trying to figure out uh, how to translate dense cover here. But anyway, we can talk about that and more with this week's speculation and news from Warmer 40K 9th edition. Right after this, quick intro. Hey everyone, this is another week of news and speculation for 9th edition Warhammer 40k. Yay! Anyway, so this week, it wasn't a really big week for Warhammer 40k Daily. Um, it was a lot of hit or miss stuff, but what we did get was a lot of faction focused stuff. And this now seems to be Games Workshop's new MO is to hide a bunch of little rules and uh, tricks and things that are going into 9th edition inside these fa faction focused articles. So we got a ton of that. Every, pretty much every single faction focus had something new and interesting to tell us about 9th edition. And a lot of it upended our, uh, a lot of people's theories going in, but even my theories as well, a lot of it upended it. So let's get right into my first one. And that is definitely gonna have to eat some crow on this. I, yeah, I know, especially for Tau too. Oh God, I was positive. I mean, I was, I think I was probably too positive. That was the thing because I was like, oh my God, they're actually gonna stop Tau stupidness, which is, Castle Tau, and I love Tau. Actually, when I uh, took a hiatus of the, from the game for a little bit, I got back in and it was when third edition for Tau. So I do actually have a sort of a pseudo soft spot for Tau, but as I've grown up with fighting against Tau, it's been progressively getting, I just hate Tau. So anyway, what this does mean is that uh, I was hoping that by getting rid of their um, Overwatch crutch, that we were going to see different Tau armies where they're going to be mobile, going around and uh, killing things and not Castle um, castle Tau. But GW, hearing the cries of Tau players everywhere, decided to release um, information saying that they can overwatch, they don't need a stratagem to do it, which was really disappointing. My only conspiracy theory on this, though, is that I'm curious. Um, if you look at the font for the greater good, it's pretty clear that this was going to be an FAQ release, not necessarily in the main rule books or in the appendix. So when we get the Indominus Crusade box, I am curious to see if we actually have these rules in the FAQ or if it's gonna be an FAQ that's gonna be published online. And that's where that greater good rules come from. Because if that's the case, I'm actually wondering, were they pressured by Tau players freaking the F out, spamming them with mail, um, spamming them with emails, DMs, uh, comments and all that sort of thing. And they just caved and they're like, fine Tau, you get, Overwatch, this is what you do. But like I said, it's it's terrible for everyone that doesn't play Tau, it's good for Tau players. Um, and it's also, actually, no, 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 I'm gonna take that back. It is not good for Tau players, because like I said, Castle Tau is the lamest version of Tau, and this only is gonna perpetuate that because you're gonna wanna be within range of all your other Tau units so you can do the, the you know, basically massive Overwatch shooting. So that doesn't change, so terrible, terrible, I have to say, but you know what? I didn't think it was gonna happen, and I have to admit, Tau got what they want, and good for Tau players that are into boring Castle Tau where you only play a game with yourself and just blow people off the board without any interaction. So if you're into that type of game, Tau player, good for you. Otherwise, for the rest of us, it's pretty disappointing. So that's my big rant for the week. Um, actually, no, that's not my big rant for the week. <laughs> my second rant for the week is, of course, the hilarity of Games Workshop and Dents um, cover. Now, on uh, Bloody Kittens Facebook page, I went back and forth with a bunch of people being like, oh my goodness, what are you doing? You're overreacting to this. The rules are pretty clear. They're comprehensible. They're just trying to stop ambiguity. And so let's go take a look at the dense cover rules really quick. Um, I'll post them up right here, right here. All right, as you can see, um, if you read them and you take a couple seconds, you can analyze it and figure out what they're trying to say here. Uh, I get where they're going, but oh my God, the formatting and just the presentation is so terrible. I can't tell you how many people from lawyers to editors to copywriters have said how terribly this is worded and how terribly formatted this is. I mean, just break it up into paragraphs, people. Now, what makes this even more hilarious is that what little people do not know is that when this went up on the Warhammer community page, we didn't have the three bullet points that we'll show right here. So those three bullet points weren't on the original article. So this is what led to people freaking out because they're like, this is so clunky and stupid. What are you talking about? So quickly within an hour, they had updated and edited the Warhammer community page to feature these three bullet points, which made things way more clear and people kind of understood it. They're like, okay, now this makes more sense. But still GW, please just at the very least break this into three paragraphs. It's that simple. Otherwise, please just, you know, edit properly. I know you're trying to stop tryhards and neckbeards from exploiting rules, but 
you know, you can't do it all the time and uh, you're always going to get a different kind of neck beard, like maybe myself who was saying um, how stupid uh, grammarly and stupid how wordy this, this, these three paragraphs were. So anyway, that's my second rant. So we'll be done with rants. Let's go on to uh, what else news we got here. The other big news and I think is amazing. I was so shocked to see it as well. Uh, and I sh everyone should be happy is that the fly keyword will not do what it has been broken to do, and that is fall back and be able to shoot. So here we go, look at it. It was in the Tau uh, Faction Focus. Damn, the Tau Faction Focus I had a bunch of information, but here, take a look. So you can see Brian, um, who wrote this article, uh, let the cat out of the bag, I'm sure on purpose. I'm sure GW definitely gave him permission to do it. Um, but basically fly, you can no longer have your repulsor run away from combat. You're gonna actually have to use the new vehicle rules to shoot into combat. But what this really hurts is units like Shining Spears, um, Tau Commanders, uh, Necro Destroyers actually get really penalized for this. So a lot of units that relied on fly to basically survive a close combat, get out, then kill their unit, then charge again if they had that ability as well. So this is a really big boon for the rest of the units and it's flying on an even keel with everything. So I'm curious, this is the big thing that Fly got. So what's Fly gonna do now? They're gonna have to give Fly some sort of bone. I just don't know what it is. I mean, I guess they can fly, they can go over intervening models, they can go through ruins, that sort of thing. So I guess you still have that, but if they're not gonna give anything else, this is a big hit to fly, but at least it puts all units on even keel. It means that if your army is not a fly base army, you can get the same advantages as a fly base army would have. So fantastic news. I'm super excited about this. As well in the Dark Eldar faction focus, we got more details on exactly how aircraft interact with other models. Now we got the aircraft rules pretty much a couple weeks ago, but there wasn't really kind of clarity. And I know the internet was like, well, oh, how does this work? Can I put models on the bases? That sort of thing wasn't clear. I mean. Obviously, GW wasn't gonna let you put models on the flying bases, but some people were calling that. So GW probably got a little a wind of this and decided, hey, this is a good time to put this in this faction focus since Dark Eldar use a ton of flyers. So basically, it just states that, um, you know, you can't put models on the bases of the aircraft. They can pass through them like we've been told before. It just clarifies all that. Um, this also clarifies that there is still a possibility for you to use a flying base to block troops. Um, because if they can't clear that base, then they can't clear that base. Um, this is just the nature of the universe. I mean, until we get uh, magnet bases for our flyers that have them float in midair, we're just gonna have to deal with this. This is just gonna be a condition of playing the game. And um, I'm sorry, it's just what's gonna have to happen. So um, there will be shenanigans. People will figure out a way to break the flyer bases and block you off, but it's gonna be so, hit or miss so random and rare that I don't think it's gonna have much effect on the game and um, I'm fine with that. This is the best they can do. This is the best they can do. All right, now the other great news we got was Strategic Reserve, which um, I'll post the rules here. Okay, so as you can see, this is pretty much what we expected. We uh, knew about this coming. We knew that we were gonna get a rule which allowed all units to come in and basically outflank. We didn't know exactly how it was gonna work, if we were gonna be including deep strikes, that sort of thing. As you can see from here and from the rules is that you can only really outflank um, after turn two. Now, of course, there's some caveats, like turn two, you can't go into opponent's deployment zone. Uh, turn three plus, you can go into someone else's deployment zone by outflanking. This is a huge boon for units that didn't get any deep strike or any kind of reserve shenanigans. Looking at Imperial Knights mostly here. So this gives really knight players a lot of great options. This really is super uh, boon to knights um, and any other army that's kind of, you know, if you're gonna kind of go with a kind of elite army that, um, like let's say custodes for instance, this is great for custodes because now you can kind of outflank a big, you know, uh, guard unit as well. Um, so this is just a really awesome rule. It's really executed really well. It's very clear GW has a good point system, uh, bullet point system for this. So it looks great. Um, it's just awesome. But let's talk about one little specific thing with it. And that is that it looks like from this rule, since it says three plus for a turn, that we are getting rid of the dumb, the stupid, the inane. My, my unit comes on turn four, it automatically dies. It can't. Dumb stuff. If this is true and this is gone, hallelujah. Now I understand why they put it in place in the first place. They didn't want end of game objective grabbing shenanigans. But now with the missions changed and more progressive missions, uh, sorry, more progressive victory point conditions, that sort of thing, it's not gonna maybe be in your best interest to leave your hitting, heavy hitting army uh, unit out on the board and have it drop on turn five to shoot once and then you lose the game. 
Now this will help if I have like a little small infantry unit that I want a little, let's say, MSU unit that I have that I need to come on and take an objective at the end of the game. This is what you're gonna use this for. And that's fantastic. It means your opponent has to play for that possibility. So I'm glad that if this is the case that we're not gonna have any more units that are being able to come in on any turn they want to come on is really great. And I hope that's the case. I hope it's true. Just from the strategic reserve, it looks like it's true. And I'm just gonna go with that it is gonna be true because if it is true, I'm gonna say true 10 more times, true, 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 then this is a great addition to ninth edition and I am looking forward to it. Other little things we got here were just other little, you know, kind of fringy things like the Dark Eldar got a little thing where they can use their patrol detachment finally and not be penalized for it. So uh, how uh, patrol detachments work, if they're not gonna be worth command points to put out, this is going to make Dark Eldar pretty awesome because they're going to start with, geez, like 18 command points or something to start the game if they actually pull this off and have like 20,000 patrol units. So that's awesome for El Dark Eldar. Um, here you can see that's a little snippet for it just in case you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so finally, I lied to you. I said I was not going to do another rant, but I'm going to do a third rant here, and this is going to be the final rant. So if you're not into rants about me complaining about Games Workshop, you can skip ahead. But wait, 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 before you skip ahead, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and uh, if you feel the need, uh, put a comment and tell me how stupid I am about this rant I'm about to go on. That's fine too, but please, uh, like I said, like, subscribe, comment if you want to. That'd be really great. Want to grow uh, this channel and as it relates to Blood of Kittens, so please do that. Anyway, the rant. And all the other news we got this week, we got a lot of news about the new Pariah book, which is the final Psychic Winging book. And God, what an effing letdown. This is the final book. I'm sure there's gonna be great fluff, but I'm not gonna pay $40 for this. We get, what, uh, some Inquisitor rules that are probably 80 to 90% from copy and paste from the White Dwarf from last year. Sure, we get a few more stratagems and rules for the new three ugly models that they released. And let's talk about how ugly these models are. Now, I understand the internet is filled with people hating it because of some weird uh, alt-right, anti-feminist um, sort of bent, but subjectively, for the most part, they look really terrible. They look like Lord of the Rings models that kind of just been cobbled together. Um, so that's my opinion on that. Of course, you can love them, that's fine, but they look really bad sculpt-wise, detail-wise, they just look kind of ugly and misshapen. So. I'm going to leave it there for that, but let's get back to the Priya book. 40 bucks for this. I'm going to get missions. I'm getting one data sheet for the Necrons, which you've hyped up. This is the big Necron book. That's it. Now, I understand we're going to get a Necron Codex in a couple months at the latest, and that's great. That's fantastic, but this was intended to be, you know, coming out well before probably 9th edition, you know, probably a month or two. Uh, COVID just kind of made this the case how it is now, but this is just bad marketing, bad, just, just bad. And also when you have this great arc, a story arc that you had where you're gonna bring everyone ready for ninth edition, you end with this. Uh, it's just, it's just disappointing. And granted the missions Stu said were gonna be able to work with ninth edition, they're kind of made with that in mind. But in all honesty, these missions are probably not gonna be used that much. Now granted there is a couple pages about basically kind of making star maps and star campaigns. That's cool, we've always wanted that sort of thing, but $40 for this. I'm sorry, this is, unlike all the other books previously, you really don't get the value for the $40 you're spending. Now, this goes back to my other half of this rant, which you can read more about on Blood of Kittens. I'm gonna go into detail about, specifically about the return of Games Workshop Greed. Now, of course, Games Workshop Greed has always been there, will always be there. It's a corporation, that's just how it works. But I have a feeling that they are kind of resting on their laurels and they feel that now they can get back to exploiting us especially at a weird time when a lot of people are going to be out of jobs, a lot of people just don't have the money to buy these models. So I'm kind of frightful for the Indominus book, I mean the Indominus Crusade box. Um, it's rumored that it is limited edition, it's not our starter set box, so that kind of means that this thing could be like three to four hundred dollars. I mean there is a crap ton of models in here and they're all new sculpts. So this could be cash grab, GW is returned. They had their price hikes, they had the outrageous prices for the new AdMech models, 
the really outrageous price for the um, new High Elf box. It's just insane. Last year we got a good price value box for the Sisters uh, limited edition box, but before that we got that weird Eldar box with the Banshees, Jane Czar, and um, the Incubi, which was just basically re-sculpting models that were just fine cast and making them plastic with just an extra couple bits. Um, that was ridiculous at 200 and something prices. So like I said, I'm kind of frightful for what the Domus box will be. Um, of course, I'm still going to buy two or three of them. Um, and that's probably the point that GW is trying to make. And it's sad that they know that, you know, me with indisposable, with disposable income is going to buy that many boxes. But for little Johnny that's going into the GW store with his mask on, mom's not going to be like, hey, uh, why am I spending $200 on this game? Wait, I have to buy paint? I have to do all these other things? So the value proposition that Games Workshop is bringing to us right now, they're going to have to do a lot more to make new players come into the game. Um, they've mastered marketing, or at least mastered marketing enough to be competent, but they're going to have to do a lot more coming soon, and they're going to have to keep those prices down and capped. They can't just keep on raising prices, especially in this post-COVID environment where people are not going to have the money to do it. Anyway, that's the end of that rant. If you want to read more about that rant, go and click on the link below for Blood of Kittens. Like I said, like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment. Thank you guys for coming. Really enjoy doing these, and uh, see you next week. Bye.